Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony for Anthony's Customs and for this review, we are looking at the Marvel Legends Iron Man The Infinity Saga Obadiah Stane and Iron Monger 2-Pack. Which is an MCU set and I don't really do MCU stuff anymore, however I do do MCU Iron Man stuff and that's what this is so I'm happy to be looking at it. And it's a pretty good set, there's some really 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 nice stuff about it and there's a couple things that are just really awful. But we're going to talk about all of that and some of it's going to be probably okay to deal with and some of it's going to be not so much. We'll see, you're going to have to decide for yourself but I'm going to give you all the information you need to decide if you want to buy it. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. Alrighty, this guy stands just about six and a quarter inches, a little bit over that, maybe six and three eighths to the top of his head, and this guy stands closer to nine inches, we'll just call it nine inches, and that's him standing pretty much straight up and down, and that's going to actually make him pretty close to 23 centimeters. That should do it. And if you want to see the size comparison to a normal figure and the big guy, if you didn't already see that, he's a lot bigger. No surprise there. So that's going to work perfectly for your MCU Iron Man displays. That's why I wanted this. I had to get it. As soon as I saw how big Iron Monger was going to be, I had to. And it, I'm not disappointed in the size. That is not what she said. Now, there are some problems, but before we do that, let's do a quick question of the day. Which of the MCU Iron Man suits is your least favorite? I haven't asked that before. For me, it's any of the nano suits prior to the last one. Maybe last two. I don't like the nano suits at all. They're not interesting to me. They don't look like Iron Man. They're not what I want. Okay, let's go ahead and start with Obadiah Stane. We'll get to the big guy after him all right this should go pretty quickly we're going to run through all of his stuff and then we'll run through all of the big guy stuff so yeah it's a suited body we've seen it all before except for the head and the hands maybe we've seen this hand but we definitely haven't seen this one because it has the little the little pinky ring on it but we've seen it all mold wise it's still it still looks too wrinkly to me i know suits wrinkle but this looks especially wrinkly so i don't know I, whatever, it doesn't matter, who cares, it's a suited figure, it looks like Obadiah Stane, nobody's going to give a crap about that, nobody's buying it based on the suited the suit sculpt. He does have some nice detail work for the shirt and tie, so I like that. And then the real main thing here is the face. Does it look enough like Jeff Bridges? I think it does. Could it be better? Sure. But at this scale, it's pretty darn good. And with the naked eye, it looks even better than it does on camera. The face is painted well. The beard is sculpted and painted well enough. I'm happy with it. And like I said, we got the pinky ring. So aesthetically speaking, this is fine. I'll give it an 8 out of 10 because the head sculpt is definitely good enough. The suited body is still not my cup of tea at all. But yeah, it'll do. As far as his accessories go, we do get the little arc reactor, which is a nice touch. I like that. And then we get a briefcase or suitcase. What's the difference? Is there a difference between a briefcase and a suitcase? Briefcase, suitcase. Am I thinking there's a difference and there's not? I don't know. It's empty, but it does open and you can put stuff in it. So cool. Uh, that's it though. So I don't know. Six out of 10. I don't know. All right, now as far as articulation goes, we'll just run it real quick in case you really need to see it. We have the hinge for the neck, so he can look up and down just fine. He can rotate just fine. A little bit of attitude, which will be good for some subtle posing. A uh, double ball peg would have really been nice on this guy to give him a nice ability to be subtly posed, but we don't have that. Shoulders do have the full rotation. The hinge, oh my god, is every joint on this guy stuck? Not literally, but almost all of them. Shoulders, I can't get them to go out to the side. Bicep swivel is fine. Double jointed elbow works nicely. Wrists, this is a trigger finger hand, but it works for the briefcase. Swivel and hinge, that's fine. Ab crunch does work if you need it. Paint doesn't go all the way up, but it goes up far enough. Let does lean forward nicely. You do get a waist twist. Hips go out to the side better than most Marvel Legends these days, so that's kind of weird. They do go forward well enough. He can do some kicks if you need to. No back range at all, really. Thigh swivel is fine. Double jointed knee is fine. And then the ankles are actually effectively ball hinge ankles. You get the swivel at the top of the hinge. You get the swivel at the bottom of the hinge. And then as long as the hinge works, you can have all the range you want. But both of mine are 100% completely frozen, so I can't use the hinges. So articulation on this guy is going to get a 7 out of 10. It's fine. It's not bad. It's not good. It's, it'll do. It's fine. It looks like Obadiah saying that's going to be enough. He's just going to stand there. That'll be fine. So, all right. He gets a 7 out of 10 for articulation. I'll just rate the two-pack after I review all the parts for both the dudes. All right. Now, this guy, which I know is not actually a guy. It's just a suit. 
Um, oh, by the way, I don't know if this belongs up here. I think it does. But in the package for me, he, this was just flopping around. So I, I guess it just clips on up there. So I don't know. We'll leave it there. All right. So far, as far as the aesthetic goes, uh, a lot of it has this like modeled metal look. So that's really cool. That little bit of texture on there. I like that a whole bunch. There is some nice sharp sculpt work throughout. Not a ton, but enough. I think that's okay. We do have a couple of different colors. This right here, I don't know if it's inten intentional though. It kind of seems like it would be, but I don't know. Just this area right here is a different silver. These pistons are a different silver. His inner thighs, <coughs> excuse me, his inner thighs are a different silver, his knees. So obviously those cut types of pieces are meant to be a different color for sure. These pistons and the ankle. Uh, I don't know. I guess this would is intentional also probably but then this doesn't this insides. I cannot speak These insides are not painted. So I don't know what's going on here It's a little bit less of a high-end figure than I would have expected at the price even if it is a higher price and a bigger figure um, It seems to me that more paint still definitely needs more paint like this thing would look gorgeous with a good paint job And we just don't have any paint on most of it at all. Uh, they did do a clear cap clear plastic cap for the arc reactor, which is just painted flat white underneath, which is less good than I would like. The eyes do have a nice glossy white in there, which give them a little bit of a luminescence. So that's nice. And that's about it. These are accessories. We'll talk about those in a second. It's not bad. The sculpt is good enough. The paints are acceptable. So aesthetically speaking, I'll give it a seven out of 10. I'm not counting the size as an aesthetic. It is that it's supposed to be that big. So it doesn't get bonus points for being big. Um, it's not the size that matters really. No, it's fine. It's, uh, I like it because it is big and it's accurate enough to the, sh to the movie, but Hasbro needs to really step up their game on these higher priced things because more plastic doesn't, it's not enough. It's not enough because these are collectibles, not kids toys. There needs to be some paint on them, at least a wash. This is really lacking anything that it needs. Okay, now as far as accessories go, we do have the two fist hands and we do have the two open hands that do have hinges in them, so that's cool. You already saw the little rocket clip thingy, so if you want to leave that on there, you can. If you want to take it off, you can do that as well. And then, otherwise, we get the smoke and the blast effect, which is just an Iron Man blast effect, which pegs through the smoke. And that's a cool, that's a cool touch, though. And you get the ammo that's being expelled from his gun. So that's a nice touch. It's a little bit annoying, though, that the ammo belt has the tips of the bullets, the actual bullets themselves painted gold. And then the spent casings are the same gold, which would be brass. I don't know, it just doesn't look right. It looks really weird, but that's it for accessories. So this stays on permanently. Oh, that, that's painted well. I forgot to mention that that's painted well. I like that. So yeah, accessories five out of 10. Not that you need a ton, but like, I don't know. I guess you could have more. But these are weird. Okay, so let's talk about the articulation. These these more premium, air quote, premium figures from Hasbro are just weird to me. I don't know. All right, the head is on a ball peg. I like that. As much as it can move, you can move it. So obviously it's going to be limited by the sculpt. That's not their fault. Now here's something they did that I don't get at all. The shoulder pads aren't connected to anything. They just peg in back here to look like pistons and aren't actually connected to the shoulders. There should be a ball peg that connects him to the shoulders and holds him in place. But there's not. So they just peg in and have a swivel. That is it. The hinge is not a real hinge. So they fall out on their own all the time just from gravity if you tilt him because they're not connected. So that is very strange. So the arm does have a hinge and the shoulder pad stays in place for that, I guess. That's fine. But when you do this, you can't move the, like this doesn't move back here either. If this moved back here, then it'd be whatever, but it doesn't. So the shoulder pads don't move like they're supposed to. So I'm gonna get them out of the way. So the shoulder does move all the way around that way. You already saw that range, that's good. Bicep swivel is fine. Single jointed elbow, no, no moving parts up here. This is all, this is all for show. It's just a single jointed elbow, minimal range, which is fine, but it's still what it is. Then again, the wrists have a little bit of a hinge. Did he have repulsors in his hands? I don't think he did, but they're sculpted there. I don't know, not painted. And that's it for the arms. So very, very minimal ranges of motion, except for the shoulder itself going up and down. That's weird. Torso appears to be a ball peg that just can lean around. 
which is cool. I mean, it's better than nothing. It rotates, which is what you're gonna need mostly. I'm not sure it did a whole lot of leaning because wasn't his crotch like right there and then his legs went, I don't know. They never really explained how he fit in the suit because I guess it would have been like that, right? And his arms were just tucked in like this. Yeah, I guess that's what it had to be, huh? Okay, that's enough of me goofing around. Let's look at the hips. I don't know what the joint is in here. There's ratcheting going on for this. It's really heavy, so you're gonna have very limited range of where you can pose this. Those three positions are basically it. Yeah, you can go farther back. So you get back. Oh man, it's so heavy. So yeah, you get the range technically, but you're gonna be so limited in imposability because of that. So I don't know, that's weird. They do close down that much, so that's fine for a straight up pose. Going out to the side, you can do that too if you wanted to. So that's all right. You get a thigh swivel. Single jointed knee gives you 90 degrees. That works well enough, no complaints there. The ankle, there is a hinge, but I can't get mine to work well. Maybe it doesn't work well at all. The, the foot itself, it's, it works just like a regular Marvel Legends foot. There's a peg that pegs in into this part. So this part just moves around like always. So your ankle rocker is really good, but the hinge doesn't want to work. And I'm not, I'm not sure it really has much place to go anyway. So essentially the ankles suck. The ankle rocker is good enough, but the, the hinge sucks. So yeah, his, his articulation is just really blah. It's good enough. It'll get the job done for what it is, but the pistons working and not working really bothers me. Like they're all just fake. They're all for show. I guess this one's a thing. What does this one do? So that's just ball pegged into it. And it just stretches it. Do you see that? It's actually stretching the plastic, bending the plastic. Okay, well, we have one functional piston, sort of. This has a hinge and a swivel in it. Why don't we have more of that going on up here? That's the thing about Hasbro. It's like they put enough effort into one part, but almost no effort into the rest of the parts. So I just have a hard time with Hasbro going this more premium route with some of these releases when they're not really at all premium releases. It's very weird to me because I want to like them and I do personally, but as a reviewer, I don't think they're doing enough. This was like a, I don't know, what was it 60 bucks for this set? 65 bucks, I think. Shouldn't we have some paint for 65 bucks? Or is that good? Like, it looks cool. I still like it personally, but as a reviewer, I feel like they're not doing enough. I don't know. You guys tell me no. Okay, so articulation on this guy, 7 out of 10. It's fine for Ironmonger, but definitely should be, I think, a little bit more. And then let's do a final verdict on this two-pack. As a collector, as a person, as a real live person, I enjoy it. As a reviewer, I feel like it's probably not quite good enough for the money because of the lack of paint and weird choices, but I'm still gonna recommend it because I'm guessing most of you are gonna have fun with it like I do. I like have fun with it as in enjoy the purchase, not like take it in the bath and play with it. I doubt most of you do that like me. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a final verdict of eight out of 10. The fun factor wins out on this one, I guess. Big Ironmonger looks good enough, is big enough. His The Obadiah Stain head is good enough. Yeah, it's fine. I, I don't know. I'm very torn. I, I'm just really torn about the whole thing. Let me know how you guys feel about it in the comment section below. There it is, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the review, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. In the meantime, keep collecting.